And then the Lord kind of took me back to Ezekiel chapter 37. And you say, well, what does this have to do? Well, I think one of the greatest comeback stories in the Bible is Ezekiel 37 and the whole vision of the valley of dry bones. God took the prophet Ezekiel out and he, and he showed them this valley of dry bones, bones that were scattered and they were very dry. And God's word to Ezekiel was, can these bones live? Can these bones make a comeback? <laughs> I love Ezekiel's answer. Oh, Lord, only thou knowest. <laughs> he was like, I really don't think so, but I think this is a trick question. <laughs> right? <laughs> I really don't think so, God, but you're seeing something here that I'm not seeing. Can these bones live? Maybe thinking about a circumstance you may have faced. Thinking about something that may seem like a, an, an utter failure to you. You know what the dry bones were? The dry bones were the evidence that there had been a tremendous battle and an army had been defeated. And the ultimate act of dishonor is to not let the, the survivors bury the dead. So it was ultimate dishonor, ultimate failure. It was the failure of a nation, the failure of an army, scattered dry bones, kind of like the worst of the worst, the most desolate, the most despairing, the most dark, situation you could ever think of and yet God said can these bones live Ezekiel's answer I don't know God the Lord said here's a solution I want you to prophesy prophesy to the valley of dry bones prophesy breath prophesy life it said oh dry bones hear the word of the Lord the phrase dry bones in this, in this scripture comes from the convergence of three Hebrew words. Shame, disappointment, and confusion. Anybody here recognize some dry bones? We suffer failure or we go through stuff. Listen, Bishop Hammond himself is going through stuff right now. We all go through stuff. I'd love to tell you, I would love to stand here and say, life in Christ is one mountaintop to the next. I'd love to tell you that there's never, ever a bad day. I'd love to tell you there's nothing ever to overcome. But the only way that we become overcomers is to have something to overcome. But when we find ourselves in that hard place, the enemy wants to come and he wants to get into our heart. He wants to pick our pocket through shame, through disappointment, and through confusion. He wants to rob our faith. He wants to rob our joy. He wants to rob the vision for the future. He wants to get us so under that we can't even begin to pick our heads up to figure out how in the world we're going to come to a new place of overcoming. So he said, I want you to say, oh dry bones oh valley filled with shame disappointment confu confusion disillusionment I want you to declare to that valley and say oh dry bones hear the word of the Lord the written word the rhema word scriptures that you've memorized prophetic words that you've received you've got to use it like a weapon when you're going through something, when the enemy is robbing from you, when you're having a struggle, you've got to use the word of God like a weapon. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And sometimes when we're going through that place, it seems like that place is the hardest place to hear from God. Have you ever been there? It's like, God, I can prophesy to 20 people, but why can't I hear you from me? Has anybody else been there? Okay, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And it says that when he prophesied over the bones, we know the story, they started to shake, rattle, and roll. A whole lot of shaking going on. 
You know what's interesting is that that word shaking actually means the sound of confusion, the sound of chaos. So sometimes for God to reassemble things in our life, the way that he wants to reassemble them, sometimes we pass through our own valley of confusion and chaos while God causes it to all come back together. How many understand, first of all, A, it is impossible for dead bones to shake. (laughs) But this is where we've got to trust in a supernatural God who knows how to turn things around, who knows how to bring resurrection life out of death. The bones began to shake. Then the bones began to come together. They assembled themselves under the hand of God. Then, then tissue and flesh and sinew and muscle and all the parts that, were, that would be necessary came upon the bones and they were put back together. They were restored to a certain degree, but there was no life. Sometimes we think just things starting to line up for us is our answer, but it's not just about things lining up. It's about God breathing life into our situation. And so he told him, he said, now I want you to prophesy again. And this time I want you to prophesy breath. Thank you, Pastor Dean, for the final song about the breath in our lungs. Come on. He prophesied breath breath. You know what the enemy wants to do? He wants to squeeze your breath out. He wants to make you feel like you can't breathe. He wants you to feel like you you just can't, you can't get it. He wants, he wants you to be exhausted. He wants you to be depleted. He wants to wear you out, wear you down. But it says, I want you to prophesy breath. This word breath is the Hebrew word ruach. Ruach. Let me read you what ruach means. And and when when I do, I want you just to lift your hands for just a moment. Because this is what I believe God is breathing into us tonight. Ruach means a violent exhale. And if you think about that for a minute, it's like somebody that can't breathe and they give them CPR. They do the chest pumps and then they... Some of you need some spiritual CPR. Come on, some of you need God to breathe life into you tonight. It's violent exhale. It bringing courage, releasing a prophetic spirit, imparting war-like energy. This is what Ruach means. Imparting war-like energy and executive power, the dunamis. Enduing men with various gifts releasing the energy of life and releasing the manifestation of the Shekinah glory of God. Prophesy breath. Prophesy glory into a place where there's death. Prophesy warlike energy into an army that's laying dead. Prophesy executive power into somebody that has none. Release it. And as you do, it says that they suddenly breathed, stood up on their feet, and became an exceeding great army. I believe this is what God is doing with the church. I believe that's what God's doing with each and every one of us. Whatever discouragement, whatever lie of shame, guilt, condemnation the enemy's trying to heap on you, whatever place of disillusionment or confusion the enemy's trying to bring, I'm telling you, God is breathing his breath of life. As much as he did when he brought Adam to life, he's bringing an army to life 